Let's go have a look. Woohoo! You know, I'm not a fan of rain when it's cold. But when it's like this, we've got 20 degrees. I've got 92% humidity. And I, I just can't help myself. In Kenya, I used to stand outside in the rain, especially when I was at the, at the beach. And I used to walk on the beach, in the rain, in the warm rain. It's not that warm right now here, but I loved it because the fine sand would build up little like mountains from the heavy, heavy drops. It was like a massage on the feet. And then we'd go into the ocean and go swimming and make sure that we can stay underwater for as long as we could because the sound of the rain above us hitting the water was phenomenal. It was so much fun. So warm rain is something that I am absolutely a fan of. Now, my temperatures tonight will be 17 degrees. So I am a little bit uh, at the edge of maybe thinking about bringing in my summer bloomers that we just saw. I'm undecisive. But isn't this a marvelous sight? <laughs> so it's a, apparently another day like this. One more day. And I just thought I'd film it. For many people, rain is not something unusual. But for us here in southern Spain, it can be quite a rare thing for about six to seven months of a year. And my umbrella is enormous and suddenly I can't fit into certain spaces. And look at my Victoria Regina, just loving life. Yeah, I love it. That moss grew in the shady area throughout the summer. Can you believe it? Sphagnum moss is on top of that, but the live moss just grew. So for me, I think that the summer location, despite being so hot, but being in perma shade, is actually the best place for my Victoria Regina. So I brought her out this morning to give her a good drink as well. This is perfect for her. Well, and all the others as well. These are the candidates I'm a little concerned about. I have never seen them so wet, not even when I was spraying in the summer. Yeah, so I wonder if two more days of this is something that they can sustain, but as long as it's fresh water, I'm not concerned about rot or anything like that because it's washing away bacteria constantly. Same with my angracums here. They're loving it. And something I wanted to do in a different video, but I'm going to show you now because the contrast of the colors are awesome. Look at my Plectral Minthus caudatus. We are finally, I think, managing to get it to how it should grow. I potted it up early, early this year. I wasn't entirely sure if I could save the plant. Doesn't like my dry conditions. But since four or five weeks, I've got root action on the surface as well. And there's a root tip right there growing again. And I kept thinking it's not doing anything, it's not doing anything, and I was very concerned. But I did suspect that one leaf, the one here on the left, sorry, I'm holding my umbrella, but the one here on the left, top left, I was trying to say that it was growing and I thought initially that was wishful thinking, but no, it is growing and is now growing two more in succession in the middle there. It is pot bound. So while I didn't see that it was doing anything at all during the summer, it was busy in the root department and it is now pot bound and showing me more roots 
and as far as I can see, they are going down. There's one right there on the left that I've really been watching. It's a branching one. You see the one here on the white? Okay, that white one is new, but the one back there in the pot on the left started the first sign that I knew it was branching and then it's going straight down. So Plectromynthus caudatus is a go. Very happy, thoroughly, thoroughly pleased. I was all this time covering my angracums, but now I'm just going to let them drink. Oh, this is fantastic. I'm getting wet feet, but I did want to show you. Look at this. Ah, oh, it's such a pretty sight. This is how they should be getting drenched, getting rained on. And look at the lights. Yeah. <laughs> This is what I'm talking about. On the gloomy days, I have my grow lights on, but only the blurples. Beautiful contrast. I have to say, I'm loving this scene. My Dama de Noche here on the left. I have brought a few things in that I thought might benefit from the lights if they're on anyway. So I brought in my Brassavola Digbiana, and I'm gonna now take in my Ciliaris as well my Coilostylus ciliaris. So I want them to benefit. If I'm gonna be spending electricity with grow lights on, then I am putting in the ones that need the light already, despite the fact it's gonna go sunny again in a couple of days. But isn't this wonderful? Excuse me while I pan you slowly. I know. I remember a six year drought here in Southern Spain. Children were born that had never seen rain. And then when it rained the first time, there was a party on the streets and all the kids that had, were that young age had never seen rain, went out and they freaked out. It was so much fun. It was so fun to watch them. It's like somebody that sees snow for the first time. But I remember that year when it rained after a six year drought and all the little kids that had never ever seen rain in their life just went nuts. So anyway, quick clip. Don't know where this is gonna fit in, but I gotta show you how the orchids are loving this and so am I. Ah, that's better. When I was watching the clip back that I just did, I realized that all I did was just yap away while walking in the rain. <laughs> Thank you so much for clicking on this video. And if you've made it past the first six minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Let's have a look and see what I have done. In the meantime, that it was pouring down. And the weather report forecast was actually a little bit off. This whole rain situation only lasted like a day and a half instead of the four days forecast. But what I have discovered since is that tonight the temperatures are gonna drop down to 13 degrees Celsius. So my plan for today is these guys all got drenched and they are in the breezy section of this little walkway alley bit here because I would like to stop the dripping and get them into their masks because they're not coming in overnight. They will go back behind the curtain where they belong, which is down. It was only up for two days, but it's down again. That sun is hot. One thing about rain, it just clears the atmosphere. Make no mistake, that sun is still warming up the leaves and I have to be super careful. So everything that got drenched is going to go back on the shelf for the night because it is only one night. Because another thing that happens when the atmosphere clears, let me, is that it gets cold. Cloud cover ensures a little bit more warmth, but clear skies, 
and it gets colder. Look at all these pots. Ooh, yeah. We were busy in the kitchen, so that's done, and everybody can go back into their masks. I still have my Denisoniana outside because I like the fact that she's getting a little bit more hot sun. I'm not going to protect her as much. She doesn't need it. She's never bloomed for me. And there's still puddles of water on the table that she can enjoy and drink up. I'm really sorry about that motorbike in the background. I hope that wasn't too disturbing, distracting. And I also have my Fias and my Cymbidium out of their masks so they can go back in to the mask today. I've got four spikes coming on my Cymbidium. It'll be a while before they bloom, but it's nice to see after the summer of not so much attention that I will be getting blooms anyway. And the Fias is doing all right considering what it's been through. And you can see the leaves are already deteriorating. Climate, climate, climate. But let me show you what else I've been doing. During the weather breaks, I took advantage of the fact that I had 97% humidity. Even when it stopped raining, I went and I took care of a lot of sheaths, especially on the reed, epidendrums, the epicatlias. They were all nice and soft from the high humidity. So I peeled, which was fun. And I mean that in an honest and genuine sense. I love peeling sheaths. This time I did not use the pesticide insecticide method because there was no need. And I didn't see any kind of pests under the sheaths either. So they just got a quick wipe down, which is great. So what am I going to do next? Well, for one, I can say that I have never seen my summer bloomers this wet for such an extended period of time. And I wasn't sure if I was comfortable with that or not. <laughs> but I sat through it. I kept watching them. They are still, as you can see, even though they're in a breezy area, soaking wet. But they're coming inside. So they're going to be inside tonight. That is what I have to do. Then I wanted to show you something before I even empty the pot. I had some issues, but this is a good issue. This is the Mirmocatlia that I got from Fernanda Nacimento Orchids and Succulents. And I left it in its mask on purpose to accumulate rain. And in the two days it was in this environment getting poured and rained on, I've got root growth starting. So I'm going to pour that water out and now we have roots, which is awesome. It's much needed for this orchid and I'm really pleased to see that. So what else was I doing? Who did I protect? Let's go have a look inside. As I mentioned that when it's gloomy, the lights are on. So I took advantage and brought in the seedlings, the juveniles, and I crammed them under the lights and all my little paths are inside and they're gonna stay inside now as well. I'm not gonna be schlepping them back and forth. There's plenty of light for them here now. I brought in my supposed Cattleya Rex over there because I think that it's a weak plant. It needed some protection and shouldn't be exposed to that high humidity. I, I would like to see if it is a Rex or not. I doubt it very much, but in order to protect it, uh, I brought it in. And I brought in my Demophorcus lowei back there because it's a hot grower. And I didn't want to risk the cool night with it. I mean, it was only 15 degrees. It was the lowest temps during the two rainy days we had. But wet and cool like that, blah, I brought it in. And I brought in my little Sophronites coccinium that we potted up because I wanted it under the lights because I can encourage now with the lights coming straight from the top, I can encourage the new growth in the back here to actually grow upright. So Coxinia, if 
it gets gloomy, it comes inside simply because I need these new growths here not to go in the direction that they are currently going. I'm trying to train them to come straight up. So all these guys came in and they're staying inside. They're not in their ideal location for the time being, but based on one night with what's going on outside, I have plenty of space for my summer bloomers and these guys can stay as they are. I'm just going to move the coccinia back to where it actually belongs and show you that with the sun, how I'm going to, I'm training it while it's inside. So I want to give the leaves a little bit of a rest. I've got it tucked behind another pot. The sun angle is coming straight from this side. And I want to make sure that these back growths are facing away Gosh, I hope you can see this based on how bright it is today. But I want these growths down here to grow upright, so I hope that that is kind of visible. So she lives behind another pot in order to encourage those growths to reach for the light. And then I had a little bit of a boo-boo. And that is why my reed stem epidendrum is inside, and that is just one example. They were in a corner of the shelving that was under cover, and I didn't realize that the angle of the rain was such that it actually filled the pot, and I did not know how long the pot had been full like that, which is kind of scary because the, the water level inside was all the way up to here covering this new growth. I have no idea for how long. So of course this pot is now empty. Um, the microfiber is going to stay moist for quite some time and I hope that I didn't mess it up too bad. I really have no idea how long it was exposed like that and the same the same goes with my Francis Fox and um, let me just pan you over slowly. The magic wand also was full up. Um, yeah, so I don't know what's going to happen. I think they will be okay, but that's why they are inside. They've had a little bit too much rainwater, let's say. They've been inundated. So there's uh, Francis Fox's somewhere up on the top shelf, same situation. The one that we repotted and saw that the roots were doing really well. Yeah, that one is also was inundated. So fingers crossed it wasn't too late and I didn't leave it too long. And I brought in my Lelia gracilis. Very concerned about this little Rapiculus Lelia. As far as the other ones are concerned, they're robust enough to stay outside. I'll do an update on the newcomers soon because they're doing amazing. But this one, oh, very concerned. I have this little new growth right here to be very protective of. I need that new growth because the rest of it is not looking very, very good. All that scale damage has affected quite a lot of the tissue and it gets much more light in here. It's right under the spectrum here, right underneath a straight line. And you can see, I uh, just brought it in to protect it. I don't need any rot to set in. If that happens, then I've lost it. You can see the previous scale damage. I mean, it's a good thing that they sent it to me without any scale on it at all. But to have sent this little guy, yeah. But anyway, I have this one new growth to baby and that's why it will remain inside now. The Panaricas, after six hours of constant rain, I brought them under the shelter of my blooming alley. I was very concerned, especially for that new growth here on my Brassavole. And I was very concerned for my Ionocentra, my sheath here, it's got a bulge in it. Six hours of heavy, heavy downpour, like the clip showed, constant. And I just thought, no, enough. You've had your flush. And I took them under shelter. So I, 
here they are now hopefully going to be dried off and be okay for the night. Well, the angraecums are still soaked. The crowns are still wet. My jumelia, you can see the crown is still wet, but they loved it. They were in their element. And it was at that moment, I just wished I had like 10 more because I enjoyed it so much seeing how they were just, you know, living their best life. If they could move, they would have been dancing the live in la vida. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. As did the Phragmopedium. The more water, the better. And it was clean water. It was good water. Because sometimes, you know, I am also concerned that if it doesn't rain that much for such a long time, the first rain that comes down, I call dirty. I don't know how else to describe dirty rain, but I call it dirty. So, you know, if you get like two hours of rain, it's dirty rain. So I usually then go afterwards and spray with RO water if I don't get any more. But this time, the amount that we had, wow, that certainly was clean rain it was amazing so basically i just wanted to take this opportunity to give a rundown what i did during the two days of rain as opposed to four and everybody's looking fabulous so fabulous as a matter of fact that on my stint with my umbrella yesterday stan here the second piece or first piece or whichever you want to call it, I saw a new growth, but maybe it's buried behind one of these ferns things, but there is, oh no, there it is. <laughs> he won't be denied. Talking about the other one, chucking out five new growths. This piece is now starting with a similar trend. Amazing, absolutely amazing. And it's like the fern has grown exponentially in 24 hours. Gosh, if I had the space, I would get more stands. I would get more of these baskets and I would just do a hanging garden. I ramble. Thank you everybody so very much for watching. Thank you for so much also for your very kind comments when I said that I may be stuck on filming based on space and I hadn't figured all that out yet. I really appreciate it. It's so motivating. And I definitely have things going that I want to film. I just have to figure out how to do it and get that out to you. Here's another new growth. <laughs> Oh, I love orchids and it's starting to drizzle again despite blue skies. So somewhere there is a monkey's wedding. At least that's what we used to call it in Kenya. If it was sunny but raining, somewhere there is a monkey's wedding. And on that bombshell, <laughs> thank you everybody. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.